when you are hearing that those particular sounds, which are the sounds of the hull itself under great stress, um, that's, that's alarming. You just never know when it's going to fail, but it is a certainty that it will fail. Ocean Gate's ambitious Titan expedition set out in June 2023 with a promise of unparalleled intimacy with history, carrying a crew of explorers, innovators, and dreamers to the resting place of the Titanic. What the world anticipated as a daring feat of private exploration instead became an unfathomable tragedy when the carbon fiber vessel vanished, only for search teams to confirm a catastrophic implosion days later. In the two years since, experts have sifted through every shard of debris retrieved from nearly four kilometers beneath the Atlantic, piecing together a forensic mosaic of engineering missteps, split-second physics, and human daring. Today, we'll explore what was found, why it mattered, and why the evidence left on the ocean floor is as heartbreaking as the lives lost. Descent into Disaster In the video, CEO Stockton Rush's wife is heard saying, quote, What was that bang? Five people, including its CEO, Stockton Rush, were killed when the Titan imploded. They were on a quest to see the wreckage of the Titanic. In the pre-dawn darkness of June 18th, 2023, Titan eased away from its support vessel, Polar Prince. The surface crew cheering as telemetry confirmed all systems green. Inside the sub, pilot Stockton Rush and his passengers, Hamish Harding, Paul-Henri Nargiolet, Shazada Dawood, and his son Suleiman, settled into cramped positions, heads bent beneath the curved carbon fiber shell. During the first hour, status pings rose smoothly through the water column, pinpointing Titan's descent on the control room's glowing grid. Then, without warning, the data stream flickered. A final heartbeat of temperature and pressure readings spiked far beyond design tolerance, and the channel fell silent. Within milliseconds, a hull the width of a man's outstretched arms succumbed to forces equivalent to almost 6,000 pounds per square inch. The vessel that had sheltered jokes, nervous smiles, and bucket list dreams was reduced to a cloud of shattered composites and vaporized seawater. Rescuers initially clung to slim hopes, scouring sonar arrays for the rhythmic tapping Ocean Gate taught clients as an emergency signal. When a Canadian P-8 patrol plane picked up irregular sounds, families ashore felt a surge of cautious relief. Yet ROV cameras told a grimmer truth. Twisted landing skids, the distinctive porthole ring, and a mangled aft cover lay on the seabed about 500 meters from the Titanic's bow. Scattered nearby were unrecognizable fragments coated in rustical dust, their edges sheared as cleanly as torn paper. Each object was carefully bagged in pressurized containers destined for a hangar in St. John's where engineers would spend months mapping microfractures and charred circuitry. Families and the public struggled to comprehend those first photographic releases. Where were the personal effects, cameras, sneakers, the Rubik's Cube Suleiman hoped to solve at depth? Experts explained the implosion generated temperatures approaching 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit as trapped air compressed instantaneously, igniting batteries and oxygen tanks in a flash fire that rivaled an arc welding torch. Organic tissues, clothing fibers, and lightweight polymers were either aerosolized or atomized, leaving behind only calcareous dust. In one recovered fragment of hull liner, investigators later detected faint residues of keratin and cellulose, molecular traces of human presence that scientific teams handled with reverence. Though the official Coast Guard press conference confirmed, quote, presumed human remains, families were briefed privately that these amounted to nothing recognizably anatomical. For forensic pathologists, the absence itself carried meaning. Such a complete thermal pressure event meant that death was not merely rapid, but neurologically instantaneous, erasing sensation before synapses could fire. It was small consolation, but it answered the most anguished question, did they suffer? The moment of implosion. 400 meters to go. It should be about 500 meters, 30. You could blink and miss it, but this is the fatal moment the Titan was lost. For submersible expert Rob McCallum, it's distressing to watch. Understanding how a 6.7 meter craft could fail so suddenly begins with its unconventional design. Ocean Gate paired carbon fiber wound in alternating helical layers with titanium hemispheric end caps, 
a marriage of materials that behave differently under compression. Early dives showed minute acoustic signatures, pops and pings hinting at internal delamination, yet tests continued. The University of Houston study published in PNAS revealed that carbon fibers near the mid-cylinder bore micron-scale kinks, microbuckling, originating from previous dives. Each excursion deepened those imperfections, allowing seawater to infiltrate hairline gaps within the epoxy matrix. On the fatal descent, pressure exploited those hidden faults. Engineers liken it to tapping a tiny crack in a windshield until, at a critical threshold, the pane crumbles in an instant. Finite element models run by the Marine Board of Investigation suggest a domino effect. A carbon fiber rib failed first, transferring load to adjacent bands, which peeled outward from the titanium flanges. Within 30 milliseconds, the entire cylinder collapsed radially, propelling fragments at supersonic speed. The titanium caps, unable to deform as quickly, tore free and slammed together, explaining why search ROVs found them warped, yet largely intact. Inside the cabin, the pressure differential annihilated air volume before occupants could blink. A high-speed camera test at Woods Hole confirmed that such an implosion would produce a jet of superheated water capable of vaporizing steel bolts. Everything and everyone was crushed, shredded, and flash-boiled in a process researchers term hydrothermally spalling. This physical reality shapes recovery expectations. There would be no bodies to retrieve, no clothing to identify, only trace biomolecules fused to debris surfaces. The implosion's violence also created a secondary shockwave. Sonar buoys later detected a broad acoustic event matching the theoretical signature, a sharp, wide-band burst followed by trailing echoes from rebounding fragments. That data, cross-referenced with hull telemetry, allowed investigators to pinpoint the failure to a depth of approximately 3,800 meters. In effect, the sub ceased to exist in the span of two frames of a standard film reel. For families, learning that the end was quicker than thought itself offered a measure of peace amid devastation. Unraveling the Wreckage the U.S. Coast Guard says it's likely recovered human remains from the wreckage of the Titan uh, submersibles. Debris from the Titan has been brought to the surface from the ocean floor. Several pieces of the doomed vessel were hoisted onto a pier in Newfoundland. The Titan imploded while on an underwater excursion to the wreckage of the Titanic. All five people on board died. The company that owns a remote operated uh, vehicle uh, that brought the debris to the surface has been working around the clock for 10 days to complete the salvage mission. Bringing pieces of the Titan to the surface presented logistical and psychological hurdles. ROV manipulators had to cradle splintered panels smaller than dinner plates while avoiding entanglement in Titanic's collapsing bow railings. To preserve clues such as fiber orientation and burn patterns, each fragment was sealed in nitrogen-flushed containers moments after retrieval to prevent oxidation. Engineers then laser scanned every surface, bringing a three-dimensional ghost of the sub, color-coding stress fractures in crimson and delamination zones in cobalt. Among the most poignant finds was Stockton Rush's Logitech game controller, its plastic shell melted to a stub of circuit board. Investigators determined it likely became superheated by battery combustion, fusing into the mesh flooring before being torn free. The Coast Guard's statement that, quote, additional presumed human remains were recovered referred to nanogram-level residues, protein chains, trace lipids, scraped from interior wall fragments. Handling protocols treated each speck as sacred. Some families requested the option of marine burial for these residues, seeking closure in the water that claimed their loved ones. Now it's time to hear from you. Does the Titan tragedy change how you feel about private exploration of extreme environments? Let us know in the comments section below.